Hi, class is now on session. Today we're going basic. We're going to learn a step-by-step -step process of creating floor plan here in AutoCAD. This is actually dedicated to my third year students. But if you want to join us, this is Miss Anj and welcome to Beyond the Classroom. The following subtopics will be discussed as we create our floor plan in today's video. 1. How to open a new file in AutoCAD. Next is how to set the units, and then we will use layers to organize our drawings. We will create our basic columns and walls, and I'm going to explain how to create and assign doors and windows. After that, I'm going to use fixtures in form of blocks, and then I'm going to show you how to use hatch. And then we're going to put text or label in our floor plan. And finally, I'm going to show you how to put dimensions. Plus, if you want to finish the video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to maneuver inside AutoCAD since I'm using this for more than 10 years. But before that, please don't forget to subscribe and click the ring button for notification. If you are new, I'm glad that you found us at Beyond the Classroom. Please leave comments below. I will give the file, the blocks, and other amenities for this tutorial for those who will leave comments at our comment section. All right, so let's get into the tutorial. Now, the first thing you should do is, of course, launch AutoCAD application. I have here for this video, I'm going to use AutoCAD 2022, but if you have lower versions of AutoCAD, you still can follow. If you don't have AutoCAD with you or your student or your teacher and educator like me, the AutoCAD give free, yes, you heard it right, free educational license for those who are qualified with requirements. Please see the description uh, button of this uh, video. I have included their previous video on how to acquire AutoCAD 2022. All right, so now this is the new interface of AutoCAD. For us to start a new file, all right, here at the application menu with an AutoCAD logo on it, there's a drop-down arrow. Left-click on it, and this will show up. Please click New, and this select template will pop out in our screen. You make sure not to open first because I'm going to set the units. That's very important. So down here at the file name, there's actually an open and a drop down arrow again. I'm going to left click here, and then there is the template. Imperial units are units using English system. Since we are in Philippines, we are using a uh, metric. So I'm gonna open no template with metric. Left click on this one and the AutoCAD will now open. All right, so now sitting at AutoCAD 2022, the file name is drawing one. When you open a new file, that is the default file name, drawing one that DWG as the extension. That is how you open a file. All right, so moving forward, if you're new to AutoCAD, this cross over here at our hours, looking at it, it is called cross here. And as we move the mouse going this side or this side, the cross here moves as well. So that is our cursor inside AutoCAD. If you have used AutoCAD before, there is nothing to, there is nothing new about it. It just moves as you move the mouse. And of course, in the mouse, there is actually a scroll button. The mid button of the scroll button of the mouse, if you hold click on it, hold click, this hand will show up and we can pan side to side. There, it see the X and Y axis and panning. And of course, zooming in and out, okay? So using the scroll button again, please roll it going towards you Again, so you can see it zooming in, zooming out, then pan. That's very basic. All right. Before we start anything, we draw anything, we should first um, set the units. So we open a file, now we set the units. Please hit the keyboard UNIS. E, units, or you can type directly on the command line or just type in the keyboard, it's the same. Hit enter. And this drawing units will show up. So our actually our project is will be using millimeters and the precision is you can actually choose two zeros, three zeros, depending on the precision that you want. 
I'm gonna leave it there. It is millimeters. I'm gonna click OK and I'm good. So now we're going to create our floor plan array. But before that, I'm gonna show you how it ends. I'm gonna show you how exactly our floor plan will be after you finish the video. So I have here a sample of a floor plan that I have created like in like during the lockdown in 2020. So this is actually a two-story, three-bedroom residential and we're gonna replicate this in our video. As you can see here at the layout, A2, uh, the line weights in set here. It is an A3 sheet of paper. And as you can see, this orange line here signifies the lot of the a property actually in architectural i usually tell my students to include this perimeter lot for them to be able to assign and be sure of the setback that they provided on the plan so i could see that there's three meters setback at front and at least two meters um at the back area of the lot plan so we have to create first the lot plan before we start our floor plan for this video but i have to skip that i have a previous video on how to plot a lot plan a step-by-step -step video as well please click the description on our video there's a link on it and we're going to move forward from this one so now we're going back to our drawing one and assuming that you have a look into that video and you know how to plot a lot plan of course now we have a lot plan all right, so this is now the lot area of that particular plan. And as you can see, this it's uh, 163 square meters. But for us to make a floor plan, of course, it should not be inclined to the certain coordinates that it is used during the lot plan. So I'm gonna copy a entity here. I'm gonna select it. And then I'm gonna highlight it. I wanna left click down here on your mouse and drag your mouse going up. There, as you can see, you can see the um, the green rectangle. And if I left click up there, the whole thing is now being highlighted. That means that I have selected. I'm gonna hit CO in the keyboard shortcut that's copy, or you could use the modify ribbon here. Left click, copy, left click there, and I'm gonna click a certain point wherever I want. Left click, base point, and then I'm gonna move it from side to side. All right. So as you can see, there's actually a green dotted line parallel to the polar of the distance I've been mean, copied. I'm gonna left click here. You can see that this um, entity is now copied. So I have used this um, zoom in, zoom out, and of course span that we have explained a while ago. So down here, this is actually the, the poly here. There's, um, the um, icons here with some blue on it some don't have so blue means they are activated so i want you to go here this is polar tracking i want you to make it sure it's on by left click on it if you do not see the polar tracking here uh, make sure that you click the three buttons down here customize and please check the polar tracking as well as um, the snaps I want you to left click this drop down arrow but it goes up you make sure that some um our snaps are on so we need that intersection extension midpoint please make it on and of course um the things that you want center i think it's good okay this actually the snap that you need uh during this floor plan i'm gonna explain later on so moving forward so now I have copied this instant lot plan and of course I don't need the other lines there. I'm going to delete it. Of course, I'm going to highlight it, select it because I don't need that. Of course, delete, delete on the keyboard or you can click erase. All right, so I'm going to rotate this floor plan into the appropriate um, uh, parallel to the line of 90 degrees so what i'm gonna do is of course i don't have to make a floor plan with the exact inclination of its coordinates so i'm gonna make it flat into the road lot so i'm gonna create a line first to be able to have a, a standard pattern of the 90 degrees or 180 flat i'm gonna use xl all right X line, enter on the keyboard, 
and then I'm gonna put a horizontal. I need a, for a horizontal construction line. I'm gonna hit H on the keyboard shortcut H for horizontal. I'm gonna click enter or spacebar. It's the same in AutoCAD. If you click spacebar or enter, it is the same. And then I have here now a horizontal construction line. And if I left click on this area, there's snap. That's the snap. There, left click on the center snap, zoom out, and escape. If you want to escape, the crosshair will go back to its default mode because there is no command. All right. So I'm going to rotate this parallel to this, perpendicular to this 180 degrees construction line. Now, I want you to select all the entities there. So the fastest way to do that, of course, in highlighting uh, AutoCAD entities for faster work. If I left click here and drag my mouse down here, everything that touches that green square will be selected. But I don't want that to happen. I'm going to hit escape. Now I'm going to uh, click up here from the upper left. But I'm going to uh, drag my mouse going to the lower right. You can see that the yes, rectangle turns blue. So now everything that is inside this blue rectangle, if I left click down here will be selected all right so there is actually a specific selection in AutoCAD for you to be able to do it in a faster way okay so I'm gonna rotate it the command for rotate is RO on this keyboard shortcut I mean and if you want to click there at the modify ribbon that's rotate I'm gonna left click rotate all right and then I'm gonna specify a base point the where I'm gonna rotate it I'm gonna zoom here here there's the intersection. I'm going to rotate. So I'm now dragging the mouse without clicking anything. So there is actually a certain degrees that I don't know. But for me to be able to use that line that I've made, I'm going to hit R on the keyboard. R. Reference. Enter. Or spacebar on the keyboard. And then... I'm gonna zoom here and left click on this first point. That's my reference. And then I'm gonna drag my mouse, left click again here at the second point. And then now I can move it freely there. So now I can snap it to this polar construction line. Left click, zoom out, and now our floor plan is on. I mean the lot plan is now in the upright position. I'm gonna delete this construction line. I don't need that. And now we're good. Now we need to, of course, create, recreate that floor plan that I once presented to you. All right. So now I'm going to move this um, descriptions here. I don't need that. You could put it outside the lot plan. I'm just going to delete it. So down in the lower right of our screen, I have put there the reference to our plan so the first thing you should do of course is to justify or of course offset our setbacks that is in the example reference floor plan so this is now the first part is the creating the offset so according to our floor plan there is actually a distance of three meters from this one line one to four going inside so for us to establish that three meters I'm gonna use offset actually in AutoCAD I told my students there are hundred ways to do it you can use offset you can use line you can use multi line as long as the result is the same the faster you want it you go for it so now I'm gonna use offset offset is actually offsetting lines from a certain um, origin so this is actually on the modifier ribbon this is what it looks like the keyboard shortcut is O I'm gonna hit O on the keyboard and enter and then of course the AutoCAD is telling us to specify offset distance um, I have here a instruction on the screen there is also instruction down here at the command line but if you on the dynamic input it would go uh, together with the crosshair so specify offset distance I need a three meters setback this is millimeters I'm gonna hit 3000 as the distance this three meters I'm going to hit enter and the AutoCAD will tell us select the object to offset. So this is the object that I want to offset. I'm going to left click here, one, 
and of course left click inside now there is the three meters offset of our setback all right moving forward so the setback another setback in this left area is actually 1.2 meters here going inside and there's actually 1.8 from here going inside and the remaining will be above is actually 3.86 so we have to repeat offset in autocad your last command is actually the next command if you hit enter or spacebar in the keyboard so the last command is offset i don't need to o enter again or click offset on the draw uh, modifier even if i hit enter again you can see that the next command is the last command that we use so offset i'm gonna type the distance of 1200 i'm gonna hit enter and then of course the autocad again will ask me what to offset i'm gonna offset here left click going here and then i'm gonna hit it um hit escape enter again for the next offset the next distance is actually 1800 that's 1 1.8 meters enter left click here going inside escape enter again for the last offset the distance is 3860 enter from here oh actually there is no reference point i'm gonna create an extension line enter h for horizontal enter i'm gonna zoom here and snap in this intersection left click escape so that's the what i'm going to offset offset again that's distance enter left click and that is the offset that i want i'm gonna select this one and delete because i don't need that so we have just created the center point of all the offsets of the setback that we need for our lot this actually signifies the center point of that setback that i need so the next thing that i would do is actually put a location a center point for all the columns that i need so the reference point actually have columns so i just need to know where is the exact location that so the first thing that i'm sure is this corner have columns I'm gonna use a rectangle for the column. I'm gonna left click here at the draw ribbon or the shortcut is REC on your keyboard. Left click and then the AutoCAD will tell you specify first point corner. I'm gonna left click anywhere you want, left click and then you drag your mouse. All right, the um, dimension of our column is actually 0.30 meters. That's 300 by 300. In AutoCAD, the first um, digit that you will input is actually will be the x-axis and then it's separated with comma and you input the next which is the y-axis I'm gonna hit on the keyboard 300 comma and I if I click comma there's a lock icon that you will see on the screen lock that's mean my x is 300 I'm gonna type 300 again I'm gonna hit enter and now there is my rectangle which is 300 by 300 column so that column is where I'm going to move it. So if you move something, copy or anything, or you have to modify, you have to select it. And then copy is CO in the keyboard, enter. And now this is where the snaps that we have checked down here now help us. So there's actually snaps or corners in AutoCAD where you grip something. So you grip something out of where you want to put it. So I'm going to grip if I hover around here, this would give me a center point. But if there's no center point, I'm going to make sure that the center point here in my snap is on. Yeah, geometric center. I'm going to hit click on this one. And after I did that, if I hover again, there it is. Now there is a center snap base point. I'm going to grip it and then move it to the corner that I want there that's the first column all right we're making progress so now i have to make sure where is the next location of my columns i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna offset from a reference point so i'm gonna do things the faster way offset and i need a distance according to the reference is 3 5 from here going there i'm gonna copy again select co this is my next location and I'm going to do it until I have finished 
all the columns located at the center point using offset and copy just repeating the um, our steps and instructions all right so assuming that you have located the locations of your columns and you have copied that one column square that we have made into that center points we're done the next step of course is creating walls hooray we're creating walls and to do that we're going to offset again so there's many things you can do with offset the walls actually is 100 mm because we have uh, we are using four inch hollow blocks so in millimeters that's actually 100 mm so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna zoom here actually at this area so from this center point i need at least a 100 mm thick wall so from the center i'm just gonna use offset again from this offset 50 both up and down to create the column uh, i mean the wall that i need so o enter the distance is actually of course 50 because i'm uh, having it from the center point enter and i'm gonna zoom here i'm gonna left click on the center point and of course i'm gonna left click inside one that's one i'm gonna click the center point again left click and I'm gonna left click outside and there it is that is our 100 millimeters uh wall i'm gonna hit escape all right if you are confused or not so sure if the distance is actually 100 mm if you have trust issues in autocad you could hit in the keyboard shortcut dist it's distance that's how to inquire hit enter or spacebar and then you click here first point and second point here and the other one says ray it is 100 mm watt all right just offsetting so for us to do it again of course oh enter the distance is 50 the same i want you to offset all the walls that you need according to our reference you have to do it again and again until all the walls that you need is offset 100 mm all right so now assuming that you have offset all the walls that you need we have to trim and cut the unnecessary um lights that we don't need so i'm gonna zoom here i'm gonna show you how to trim. actually trimming in autocad is very easy the uh, icon is on the modify ribbon that's trim if there's a drop down arrow it goes with extend because they have a similar aspect the extend and trim of course trim is to cut okay we need to trim something that we don't need in the keyboard shortcut trim is tr and then enter in the lower versions of autocad you have to click enter twice but in autocad 2021 starting 2021 you don't need that just enter and then you need to trim the things that you need again if you are lower versions of autocad you have to click enter twice so in me i don't need that actually i could zoom in trimming you could actually click trim 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 or it's gonna trim like that but it actually consumes time what i do is the selection um, to make it fast, I'm going to show you how to do it. In trimming, uh, left click here, there, then drag your mouse going up. Okay, if you do that, everything will be trimmed all at once. Left click. So left click here, drag your mouse. I told my student, you work smart, not work hard. So I'm going to zoom here. Actually, I'm going to trim all of this. Trim, trim. And I'm just going to... Oh, there's something that I need. So there's actually the covenant, the drop down that I've shown you, extend. So EX on the keyboard shortcut, enter. If you are lower versions of God, hit twice. Uh, left click, it's gonna extend. ER, there. So that's the thing that I need. I'm gonna actually don't need this one. I'm actually now leaving behind the center point because I need that. So I'm going to trim everything that I don't need um, in the reference according to the reference of our color plan. So all you have to do is trim all the unnecessary lines and you will be able to see the room assignment of our floor plan. Alright, happy trimming! 
And now, assuming that you have trimmed all your way and you have seen actually the shape of our floor plan, there are actually conditions in trimming. Um, I just forgot to tell you. Um, if I zoom here, uh, trim is if there is an intersect intersecting line, you can trim it. But there's actually some things that you can trim. For example, I'm going to show you. I have left one trim line here because I want to show you something. For example, if I mistakenly trim something, okay, if I trim here, TR, of course, trim all, trim all, actually, this remaining set in the lower versions of AutoCAD will not be trimmed. But here in AutoCAD 2022, that's new in this AutoCAD version, you can actually trim everything else. But in the lower versions of AutoCAD, if there's no intersecting line beyond this construction lines being left, you don't uh you can't trim it um the version is actually 2021 20, lower all the versions there all you have to do if you want to get rid of that line you have to select them and hit delete all right so tr okay for example i have um mistakenly left this thing in the lower versions of God, it will not be trimmed, so you have to select, then delete. The good thing about 2022, thank you very much Autodesk, is you can actually trim everything, including those extending without intersection or something in the last part. There, very handy. Oh, I miss it. Extend, then trim. Alright, so assuming that you are happy now that you know how to trim lines and you know how to offset and you could be able to maximize offset and trim just to create your floor plan, we are looking into it now. The next thing that we should do before we put actually the fixture is layering. We have to organize our drawing. So there are people who use are using a real layer name to assign line weights and of course to organize our drawing but i have to skip that i have also an older um, video on how to do layers and how to assign layers i want you to check that out first and you'll be able to get back on it and do the layer of this one so i'm using actually pen assignment pen assignment is just how the thickness of the lines the line weights that i need to be able to finish the whole project i'm going back to the example of the floor plan that i have made actually you can see there is actually colors different colors in my floor plan it signifies my layer actually because if i turn on here the um line weights blue you can actually see that there's actually thick lines thin lines the line weights of my drawing so if we're able to print it it would signify uh, certain weights and line weights for the plan I'm gonna turn it off so that what layer does here at the layer panel I have explained all of the layers in the video check that out I am actually just using pen assignments you can see there's actually point one according to line weights and we're gonna do that in our floor plan Now, assume again that you have seen that video I'm going back to that floor plan that we are actually creating. Assuming that you know how to create new layer and all this, now we have a layer here. To assign layer is actually very easy. You have just to select um, the things that you want um, to be the same layer. And then, of course, drop down here and just select a lot. As you can see, that the color of the layer goes to the color in the lines as long as you have selected here in the properties by layer by layer now i'm gonna zoom here i'm gonna make sure that my column is actually 0.5 in the line weight so i'm gonna drop down again here click 0.5 now you can see that my rectangle turns blue and if i turn on the layer um the line weights here it should be thick as 0.5 left click there it is now that's the line width that i want as you can see my wall doesn't go to the line width that i want so i'm gonna change it i'm gonna left click here to turn off the line width. i'm just checking it 
Okay, for us to be able to make everything on its appropriate language, of course, I just said a while ago, if I click here, I need this 0.5. The center line, I'm gonna click here and assign center line. So you can see now the colors vary. Now, you don't have to do it again and again. There's actually a hack on it. There's match property here. Match property is it match the property of layers and all the aspects that you have put on the layer and it copies from a source. For example, I want to turn all the columns into that exact layer. I'm gonna type MA on the keyboard, that's match property, or you can left click on this um, ribbon. I'm gonna click MA, enter, and then AutoCAD will tell me, uh, please click a source, a source that you want. I'm gonna click this column, and then the crosshair will be a paintbrush. Now I'm gonna click everything, all the columns. Selection. I uh, told you that there is selection that it would not select the other columns lines. So now all my columns is 0.5. And of course my wall. If you want to change, just click escape. MA again. I'm gonna change the um, layer of all the center lines. So my center lines source. Zoom in. Select. Zoom in, select, zoom out. So that's the how handy it is. Zoom in, zoom out. There, it changes color. So now I'm not just um, coloring the um, the lines, but assigning properties to it. So there it is. M A on the source, and click all the things that you want to follow the line way. Easy as that. And trim. So we just use handy tools like trim, extend, uh, match property. We're really making a progress here. If you like the video, please uh, leave comments below. I want to know. It really helps this channel. Thank you very much for all the support. All right. So now we just assign line weights. If I turn the, um, the display of the line weight, see that there is actually now a variation of line width into my drawing. I'm gonna turn it off and I want you to finish the whole thing and the next thing that we do is actually um, assign doors and windows. All right. To assign doors and windows, we have to actually locate first the opening of the doors first. Door. All right, I'm gonna zoom here and according to our reference, there's actually door one here. And I want to make sure the location. So I'm gonna do some line. And of course, again, offset 100. And our door one is a panel door 1,001 meter offset. And of course, our favorite uh, thing to do is, of course, trim it, P or, and trim the whole thing. Of course. If it really trims, there is actually not intersecting the line below. So TR, trim again. Oh, it really trimmed all. So I'm going to do is put a construction line to make it infinite. There. Oh, zoom in. Actually, it did not fit. It, it did not fit. Alright, construction line. TR, trim. All right, I'm gonna delete this one. Now there's the opening of our door and we have to do it again and again to all the opening of doors and windows so there could be a, have an opening so we could assign doors. So that's the door. So there is actually window one here. I'm just gonna use um, construction lines for me to be able to know where is exactly the thing that I want to trim. So from the center point, there's actually three opening for uh, door uh, window i'm just gonna offset things 300 from center point going here so 600 spun and then offset again 600 that is the three panel opening of my window i'm gonna trim the things that i don't need delete delete trim 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 all right, so that's the opening of my window. I want you all to locate all the doors and windows, use uh, construction lines, offset, trim, extend, delete, 
and provide openings so we could decide doors and windows. All right, now assuming that you have located all the locations of doors and windows and you provide the opening, let's now assign door. Actually, you could actually create your door just using the tools above. So example, you can demonstrate rectangle for the door itself, rectangle or you see. Left click here and of course, I'm going to type something. Okay, first input again is x-axis. It's going left, so it's negative. Of example is 50, comma, it will block. And of course, the height of the door is 1,000 because the opening that we have made for door 1 is 1,000. I'm going to hit enter and this actually represents the door. We have to create the arc for the adjacent of the door. You have to go here at the draw ribbon. Um, what I'm using is you have to click this drop down, uh, drop down arrow and please find start and direction. That's what I use. I have tried so many arcs and this one is very handy for the last 10 years, okay? Left click and then left click here. Left click on the top of the door. And then use polar array, then it signifies that it's parallel. Left click and now you have a door. But you don't have to do that. Actually, if you leave comments below, please do leave comments on where you are watching so I could know and your email address. If you do that, I will actually be very happy to give you all my doors, windows, and the fixtures for free. Okay, thank you very much for all the support. So what I'm gonna do is just find, actually I have a library of all the fixtures because for so many years I have figured out I have to prepare myself, just copy and paste in case I need one copy here. So this is actually the door one. And all I'm gonna do is, of course, just rotate things if I want to. I'm gonna rotate it there. Okay, so actually there is actually there. So it actually facing the other way. All I'm gonna do is do mirror. I'm gonna use another tool. Select this one. And then in the modifier ribbon, there is mirror. So you can flip actually from a um, certain way. So this is the... Uh, mirror i'm gonna left click here at the center point and then it would copy another door facing the other way which is exactly what i need so there it is and it is actually a block there so there is now my door one i'm gonna give it for you just leave comments below on where you are watching and of course your email address i'm gonna email to you so that's door number one easy as that then I'm gonna go back here. There's actually window one and window two. I'm just gonna copy. You could actually use line, but it's time consuming. I have to work smart. So I have so many files for so many years. Okay, that's window. If I need to the other one, it's actually blocked. You can uh, explode it if you want. So you could copy. And then I'm just gonna rotate it. Oh. there and move it to the location that i want and it's good to go there that's my window and there's actually a door here at the toilet and it's actually 600 there in the i also have 600 and according to the reference copy i'm just gonna rotate it in the position that i want oh it's facing again I'm just gonna mirror again to the other side delete this one move and snap it there exactly where i want them so i'm just gonna delete some things that i don't need i'm just gonna change point now i'm good so you just have to find fixtures it's very handy all right so the next thing is to actually assign fixtures and I also have libraries of all the fixtures. Actually, I have so many doors and windows to choose from because, of course, I have to prepare my library for easy work. So, example, for the carport, I have cars. Just assigning that. All right. For the dining area, I'm just going to assign them there. And for my living, I have so many fixtures for this one. I'm just going to put it inside there it is easy as that and of course for the tnb 
Uh, actually, this is just a toilet. <clears throat> because the other rooms are above, they're standing there. Just gonna sign it there. There! So you're just gonna place all the fixtures that you need to the exact location that you want them, and you're good to go. Alright, so in our reference, I told you that I want to uh, uh, in encourage you to hatch things. So hatching, actually, um, I remember one student of mine, she really wanted to uh, put tiles on the floor plan. And what she did is do it manually by hand. And she used lines there and offset it and make a intuition that is a tile for the CR. Uh, don't do that, okay? Please don't do that. There is actually hatch in the draw ribbon here. The shortcut is H, enter on the keyboard. And then the AutoCAD will tell you, pick an eternal point or where you're the location of the hatch that you want. So I'm gonna click it here, the boundary. This is the areas that I want. And up here, you could uh, select a pattern. So the tiles is actually a net. I'm gonna find it, it's alphabetical. It's net there. And of course, as you can see, there's no changes yet. Because I'm using mm, the scale is too small. So I'm gonna change this one into 15. You can see the change if I hit enter. All right, so there it is now. So you can see that it actually hatched the entire thing, including the water closet. All you have to do is select remove and remove the boundary. You make sure that everything else would be hatched except the things that you don't want. And if I click enter, it would hatch the whole thing. And I'm gonna change this line weights. I'm gonna home into a thinner thing, point 10, because the hatch should be really thin enough that it won't hamper the line weight of the plan that you want. So I have now hatch area of the thing. Next on our task is to label the location of our floor plan. And to do that, actually, I also have a, a previous video of creating text in AutoCAD, which actually detailed if you want to know about text, but for the um, purpose of demonstration, here at the annotation, I'm gonna click a, a uh, multi-line text. There's actually a single line, multi-line. The, check the video, it's actually detailed. I'm gonna left click here, left click, and then drag, and then this will show up. I'm gonna type living here. Oh, uppercase, living area. And this also worked as the Microsoft Excel, so you, uh, Microsoft Office. I have to highlight the words and of course change the text. Zappo Verdana. And of course I'm gonna change the height because it is mm, so I'm gonna type 300 for 3.3 mm. Enter, zoom out, left click outside wherever it is, and then you can see there is living area. I'm just gonna move this one there. And you change the layer into 0.3 for the thickness. And if it actually uh, over or under something, you have to select, right click, there's draw order, send to front, so it be above. And then you don't have to do it again, work smart, copy, move it here, I'm gonna type dining, because I'm too lazy to do it again and again, move. And copy again, kitchen, so it's very handy. Oh, I misspelled it, I'm sorry. So there it is. You just have to create one text. But the video is actually more detailed. Check that out. Okay, down to our last task. But before that, I would like to mention a couple of people. Thank you very much for Sir Joseph um, for always commenting on the videos and for my co-teacher, Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Daradar. Hi, shout out. Thank you very much for all the support. For those who want this file, not this file actually, but this completed file, I'm just gonna give it for free. Just comment your location below. And of course, your email address, I'm gonna send it to you just to say thank you for always supporting this channel. All right, down to our last task, dimensioning. So you can see there, you just have to dimension it. Actually, I also have a detailed um, previous video on how to do this dimensioning in MM. So there's actually dimension style. It's very handy to use. And if I go back here at my um, floor plan, 
the dimension is actually just above here. Uh, there's actually near dimension which is really easy to use if you watch the video there's very detailed if i use this one you just have to click from corner to corner and then the autocad will provide you dimensions but because we did not set the actual um font and arrow size it really does not say anything else unless we zoom in if we zoom in this actually dimension which is 3500 because that is exactly the size but because it, we did not set that one, it actually too small. So check the video, and if you did check this video and set the mm, there's actually one is to 100, one is to 50, and so on and so forth. You'll be able to have a set dimension. You just have to select it for the purpose of demonstration. Okay, assuming that you have watched that, that video, that is very helpful, of course. Um, there's actually a one is to 100 um, style dimension style okay so assuming that you have set that you go here at the annotation and of course you have to change this one this is the standard I'm gonna change that one there's actually a floor plug there that is my desired one is to 100 dimension style I'm gonna set, set current close and of course, if I use dimension now, I could really see the size of the third line. Enter. As I've said, the last command that you have used, if you click enter again, it is the next command. If I go to the dimension, the annotation, there's actually a continuous uh, dimension here. If I left click here, it would um, continually put dimension to the next area easy right ctrl z again if i click um linear and i dimension here at the center point if i click continue it would continue its dimensioning very handy okay escape if you want an outer dimension of course you have to do it again so from here, going here, there you have it. And then I'm just gonna move this one. There's actually a fixture there, delete. Okay, so there it is. So we have to just put linear because we're just using floor plan. There's actually different types of dimension I have there at the um, tutorial just for dimensions itself. So if you want a deeper explanation to this one, check the video on the link and that's it. So after we have done that all things, we have actually created a floor plan. Looking forward to it to be able to be in this kind of set. This is actually two story, but the concept is the same. We just use trim offset copy match property so on and so forth just that tool be able to have a floor plan and that's it it took us almost a 49 minute video just for a floor plan i hope this is helpful tell me what you think about this video leave comments below hit like subscribe thank you very much for all the support this is teacher Ange, class dismissed See you at the next video. Thank you very much.